Insurance Advisors Secret 340k Lives. Hank. Yes, well, I'd like to know where they get that figure from because it certainly not, doesn't reflect in my bank account. Um, I think in terms of that particular article, there are, there are some things viewers need to understand about that. And the first one is the term churn. Um, it's used frequently in the industry as an industry term for where advisors shift their clients from one insurance company to another for no real apparent reason or benefit to the client. And there's often an assumption then that they're doing that to regenerate their income or, to, or for their remuneration. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, and it can happen. Um, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that a client should not look at what's available in the marketplace. And if they're, as their circumstances change, then they should look at where the best policies for their circumstances are. If that means changing suppliers, then that is exactly what they should do. So how often, Barbara Lee, should we actually talk to somebody like yourselves and say, well, we need to update? Well, you know, I mean, when, when you buy a house, um, you know, you don't expect to possibly live in that house for life, do you? You expect to upgrade as your life changes. And it's the same thing with your policies. Policies change over time, policy wordings change, and we need to make sure that if there's a claim, that they're going to get the best possible outcome at claim time. Um, I mean, I had a client who, because he had a very, very old policy, uh, his policy wording meant that he didn't meet the claim definition. Whereas if he had had a, had a regular review, review mm. with us, we would have um, looked at what he had. And if he was medically able to move to another policy, that's definitely what we would have recommended. Mm. So how often should we review? Oh, every 12 months is great. Um, two years the maximum. Uh, any time that you've got a change in your life, you know, a change of occupation, uh, you've moved house, uh, you might have stopped had smoking, had children. Divorced. Any, <laughs> yes, yes, that's a big one, you know. Mm. So all those moments in life we need to stop and just have a look and see if everything still suits our needs. And it's our role to make sure that if there's something there that's going to be to the client's betterment, then it's our, our duty to uh, tell them about that. Hank, let's go back to that article because it is a perception mm -hmm. they actually had a button for a lot of people yep. overseas trips as an incentive to put my life insurance into a different company ah uh, yeah there are certain incentives that life insurance uh, companies put in place for those that uh, achieve um, levels of business if you like um, it's like any other sales incentive you know the insurance isn't, industry isn't unique to that there are a number of industries that incentivize through what we call uh, soft dollar commissions it's a reward that's that's given to a degree on hard work if that makes sense um, we get paid uh, because we do business if we do nothing we get nothing um, so there is to a degree, uh, like in any commission sales, what we term the 80-20 the rule, where 80% where of the business is written by 20% of the people that are out there doing the business, uh, similar to a lot of commission sales. So should we get rewarded? Is it an incentive? It's, it's, it's there. Um, will that make a difference to a lot of advisors on where they where they place their business? I don't think so. Certainly not for the prudent advisors. Mm. We've said it before on this program. You know, we're business people. We rely on clients. We rely on clients to produce more business for us and to continue our business. Um, if we get an extra reward for being good at what we do, so be it. That's that that's there. But does it dictate what we do? I don't think so. Comes back, I guess, to your comment about the fact that you sit down with somebody and you don't even think of the product until you've worked out their needs. That's exactly it. Yeah, exactly it. So you don't go in with the preconceived idea that these people are going to be buying that company? No, that's right. No, it totally depends on the client. And, you know, if you're out there and you haven't maybe seen somebody about the policies that you've had in place, well, you know, get in touch with Hank and I. We're happy to come out and show you through your options and just check because people could well be in the wrong one. Absolutely. And that's, you know, you, at claim time is, you know, where you want to be in the right, the right policy that's going to give you the best outcome. Hank, is there an overall body that controls insurance advisors? And if, if they do fall off the line a wee bit, that they can be bounced? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, since the Financial Advisors Act came into, into being, there was the Financial Markets Authority, which is essentially the the police, if you like, of the of the financial services industry. And a lot of this article was 
was about uh, how the Financial Markets Authority are taking a, a closer look at advisors that on a regular or disturbing number of, of, of changes from one company to another. So yes, very definitely, and they have the authority to be able to act. So if somebody is doing what this article was suggesting, uh, they can have their license, for the want of a better term, taken off them. Yeah, they can. There are certain there are certain aspects that that uh, uh, um, the, the financial markets authority have. However, we're still governed by uh, other um, statutes. We're still governed by uh, you know the Consumer Guarantees Act. We're yep. still governed by the Fair Trading Act. We're still governed by the Crimes Act. And I can tell you now, there are advisors who are serving terms of imprisonment uh, because they acted outside of the of the Crimes Act. They committed fraud. Um, so, yeah, there are lots of other enactments, and there are lots of other policemen out there. So, you know, we need to act within the law. We need to act ethically and professionally. Um, and you know, our business won't survive. Our industry won't survive unless we do that. You've rest re restored my faith. <laughs> Thank you both very much indeed.